Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I feel foolish. So I uh, started the stream, but I was streaming to the wrong place. So Cassie and I have been talking to no one for, um, for you know, 10 minutes now. So <laughs> feeling a little silly right now. I apologize for that. Sorry, we're late. I definitely thought we were live. Um, <laughs> in a practice run. We Yeah, so we got a great practice. So this is going to be the most flawless opening you've ever seen. So hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today <laughs> on the show, we have the absolutely charming Cassie Evans. Cassie, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so glad to be here for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so I, you know, I've been a fan of your work for a really long time. I think you do such incredible stuff uh, with with SVGs and animations. Um, and I see the chat is excited as well as they are burying you in boops. Um, <laughs> but so for those of us who are not familiar with your work before you uh, perish from drowning in boops, do you want to give us a little bit of a background? <laughs> um, we both yes. have to like tiptoe to... So, hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, I am a front end developer. Um, I used to be a graphic designer um, and I used to do a little bit of motion graphics um, before I learned how to code. So um, when I started learning how to code and I discovered SVG, I just found it really exciting because it's this um, kind of cool middle ground in between design and development. So yeah, it's uh, it's just a really exciting kind of thing if you're more visually minded. And yeah. Also yeah. And it's it's such a cool thing, too, because it's like um, I feel like it's one of those things that it, it looks like magic. Right. Like when you when you put out the stuff like you've released, like your website has this SVG animation where the eyes follow your mouse around and and those sorts of things. And, and it just feels so absolutely magical. Um, but it, it, when when you're doing this, it's like it's really it's it kind of is, it's just math, right? Like it's a, it's a little bit of code, a little bit of math and, and then you're able to make this magic. And so I'm really, really excited to learn that from you today. It's also a lot less math than you think it is because oh. you, if you use Greensock, Greensock does the math for you. So <laughs> that is excellent news because as the chat knows, I am not great at math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, um, I kind of, I feel like SVG itself has, it has a few core things that you can use to create quite cool effects. And then you can use Greensock to manipulate those properties. Um, so it's kind of like a little interplay between animation and what SVG is actually capable of. Mm. Um, and it's you'll actually get further with SVG understanding what SVG itself is capable of than you will just kind of starting to try and animate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and what I think is really interesting about um, like, so Greensock, we we talked a little bit about this before I realized that we were talking to no one. Um, but <laughs> one of the things that I've that I've always been really fond of with Greensock is that it, it does so much. Uh, you know, we've got episodes. We had uh, Sarah Drasner was on and taught us some Greensock stuff, and it was really, really cool. Uh, maybe one of the mods can find a link to that and drop it in the chat. But, um, you know, the 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 thing that always freaks me out about Greensock is that I, I am immediately overwhelmed anytime that I try to to work with it. So I'm really excited that you're going to help us break down a, a concept and, and you're going to use something today that I think is really popular. I know that um, a few folks in the Party Corgi Discord were having a blast with it, which is the, the scroll trigger, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's going to be fun because scroll trigger is quite new. So I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on it because it's just popped out. So yeah. we'll, um, we can do a bit of learning together. Excellent. I'm so excited about that. Uh, all the way. Uh, also, thank you, Nate, for the sub. I really appreciate it. Um, so I think uh, on that note, maybe it's a good idea. We can switch over into to pairing mode. Um, and so everyone, make sure you go and follow Cassie on the tweeters. Um, and also uh, today, let's go back here and look at Cassie's code pen because it is just full of delightful things. I have prefers reduced motion turned on, which means that some of these are, are not working. But uh, if you don't have prefers reduced motion, uh, especially like go check out this one. This is the one where the, the eyes will follow your mouse around and it's a whole lot of fun. Um, like I said, I, I turn off prefers reduced motion and uh, that means that a lot of these 
are beautiful to look at, but don't do the things that, that they would do had I not restricted my settings. Um, and so today, oh, also, before I forget, let's do a quick shout out to the sponsors. We've got live captioning going today, as we do every episode. It's provided by White Coat Captioning. Thank you so much, Amanda, for being with us today. And that is made possible to us by uh, Netlify, Fauna, Sanity, and Auth0, who all generously sponsored the show to make this more accessible to more people, which I very much appreciate. Um, so yeah, make sure you go check them out. And if you've got live events coming up, make sure you go check out White Coat Captioning. So on that note, I have a pen that I uh, forked from you. So this is, this is a thing that you made that um, is kind of a starting point. So would you mind maybe giving us a, a quick walk down or a walk through? Let's go into professor mode, right? Like I can, and then I can share that with people, I think. I don't oh, yeah. know, let's, let's find out. What happens if you click this? Um, if you mm -hmm. are, if you are able to change things, please don't. <laughs> But uh, in the meantime, yeah, it should should allow you to follow along live as we're working in here. And um, hopefully that'll be a lot of fun. I can see some folks jumping in here and I don't know if uh, if anyone can change, but we'll see. But yeah, while we're while we're looking at this. You, you hackers, you you <laughs> dirty hackers. <laughs> That's you. OK, people can't change. OK, excellent. Excellent. All right. So this is working as intended. So um, let me walk through what I understand. We have a heading, and that's what's giving us this. And then uh, it looks like we're using the Canit font, um, making the the body like five five scroll lengths high. Um, you've got this this really nice looking background, uh, oh, some fun. styling stuff, and then putting the the heading in the middle. Okay, and that's it, right? That's all we've got so uh, far. Yeah. yeah, so, so what can, else are we up to? So I reckon to start off with, um, let's just make an SVG. So we can actually make the body 100% of the viewport height because we're not going to do scrolling stuff yet. Okay, so I'll go 100% and then I'll remove the extra characters. All right, so now when I if I try to scroll, I can't. That's the one. Okay. Um, and then we can just get rid of the, well, comment out the SVG masking bit for now. Let's just leave that. The, the H1. I... SVG so masking. In the HTML. Oh, oh, just leave this part out. Gotcha. Yeah, that's the one. Sorry, You're I was like looking for an actual, actual setting mask. somewhere. <laughs> yeah, rather than the text. <laughs> so, yeah, cool. I think the thing that I'm the most excited about with um, like today making a scrolly kind of UI mask is that graphic, like illustrative SVG, you kind of have to put it together in a graphics editor. Like you don't have to, you can be really badass and just hand code it, but you have to know quite a lot to hand code a whole kind of illustrative SVG. Right. Whereas what we're doing today is going to be quite simple in terms of markup. So we can actually hand code it, okay. which will be good to kind of demystify things a bit. So yeah, you can start by writing an SVG tag. Okay. That's as much as I know. We've, we've now exceeded my knowledge. <laughs> cool. So we're going to start by writing a view box attribute. So the view box is basically like your window into SVG space. Okay like the little window that you look through to see what's going on in your SVG. And you gotcha. can think of SVG space as like infinite graph paper that just stretches out on all sides for okay. infinity. Okay, I got you. So we're going to start off at zero, zero. So yeah, that's the one. And then we're going to say maybe a thousand and another thousand. And that is the first number is the x coordinate second one is the y coordinate and so oh, if, yeah, so what we will be in the okay. box capital b yeah like that yep okay and so what we've and, just done if i'm understanding this correctly is is we've basically said i want 
a I want to see our SVG from zero zero on the grid to a thousand pixels and a thousand pixels. So we just drew a square, a, a thousand pixel square. Yep. Okay. The the thing that people sometimes get wrong is they think that the um, seconds, well, the the second set of values, so the last, the third, and the fourth value are also coordinates, and they're not coordinates. They are the amount of the SVG that you want to see. So it's starting off at zero, zero, and it's showing us a thousand SVG units. So gotcha. if we were to move the first two coordinates somewhere else, it would still just show a thousand um, SVG units from that point. Right. So, so saying that, like, if we were to, because right now what we're doing is everything's going to be going to be relative to like the top left of the SVG. But if we wanted to center it, there's no top left. It's infinite oh, in all not. directions. Well, but but like in terms of the view box, right? So like zero zero. Then if we if we position something in there as being like a yep. hundred, a hundred, it's going to be a hundred from the top and a hundred from the left. Yeah. But if we set the zero zero to be like 500 or something um and then our top was 100 100 it would actually be like 400 up and 400 left is that right yeah, be so you wouldn't be able to see it yeah it's all very I, I i get it when that infinite graph paper thing is actually a really really helpful way to look to think of it because it, yeah. then you can picture that axis and basically with the axis we've just said let me point at the camera so this is a little more clear um we've we've got our our y-axis and our x-axis that's yes that's how it works and then we're saying that we start here at right at the right at the cross and we could set that anywhere we want right like there's no rules yeah you can set it wherever you want got it okay all right so that's a good that that was a really helpful visual metaphor i think that that alone was worth the price of admission because it just demystified <laughs> something for me um <laughs> um so yeah we can't see anything right now we've got an right. svg but there's nothing in it um so it might help to put a border on it in svg um okay. in svg in css we can put a border on the svg element okay. itself and we'll use my favorite css debugging tip yeah and so here we go there's our our svg let me make that a thicker border so we can actually see it make there it plum Ooh, plum, plum okay is the best color. <laughs> That's my favorite CSS color. Plum, got it. Okay, so now we've got a an SVG. We can we can kind of see it here. This uh, this border is the that's the limits of our SVG, and now we can put stuff in it, right? Awesome. So let's give it a width first. So at the moment, it's kind of a hundred percent of the width of the screen. So maybe let's make it fifty percent so that we can actually see what's going on inside it. Okay. And and you just brought up something that I think is really interesting. So these are only relative to the SVG itself, not to its actual size in, in the DOM. Yeah, so they're units, that's the aspect ratio. So Got it will it. be a square, um, but you control the size of it with CSS or with like a width attribute on the SVG. I usually control it with CSS though. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And so, um, and it looks like it it keeps its aspect ratio, which I like. So we set the the width to 50%. Um, all right. Yeah, if you were to set a height on it, then it would go squiffy, but it's- <laughs> Squiffy yeah, I, is a good word, I like that. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, so yeah, we can kind of see, um, if we make, let's make a rectangle inside our SVG. Okay, and that's that. that's how you do it, right? Rect, yeah. Yes. One. Okay. So a rect, or a lot of things in SVG have an X and Y value and then a width and height that's quite common. So okay. we're gonna give it X, set it at zero, so it's right at the top of the SVG. And is it quoted or unquoted? Quoted. Okay. And yes. we'll do the same thing for the Y, I assume? Yep, Y okay. equals zero. And then you or can set just width and height in uh, in percents. So we can say width 100% and height 100%. And is it shorthand W or full width? Width. Okay, 
and uh, we'll do 100%, height, 100%. Hey, look at that go. And then is this a self-closing? Um, yeah, so you just okay. have one little closing. Awesome. And then to change the color on that, we use fill. So fill is kind of like background color in SVG land. I kind of think of SVG as it's like HTML, but for graphics instead of documents. So mm. it's very similar to HTML, but you have some things that are a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, so we've got two questions. So Nikki asks, do the X and Y values have to be within the values you set for the view box? So Not like quite if sure I, I understand that. Like if I set this to negative 50. Oh, yeah. If you set that to negative 50. Oh, cool. Yeah. So look, it just it pulls it off. It, yeah, it would move it over by 50. Okay. We are and then, then Nate asks if the percent is relative to the view box. Yes, the percent is relative to the view box. Excellent. Okay. So. Yeah, so if you like, I think if you're trying to understand positioning in SVG, writing yourself out a really simple SVG just like this and kind of moving rectangles around, changing the properties of the view box, it's really helpful to kind of understand things. And so like here, yeah, if we start messing with this, we we go 50% by doing half of the viewport. And so, yeah. uh, but then if we wanted it to be like height 50%, we could also do it that way. Yeah. Someone said it doesn't have to be within the view box, but you won't see it. And that's what I meant by it's like a window into the SVG infinite graph paper. So you can imagine like SVG graph paper just stretches forever and you mm -hmm. can plot graphical elements on that wherever you want, literally wherever you want. You could do like minus 3 million <laughs> over that way, um, or you could do plus 27 million that way, billion that way, trillion that way, whatever. It just goes on forever. Um, but the view box is the bit that you can see. So you kind of want to plot things in the bit that you can see. Um, and then the question, there's another question about why we used a thousand. Is that just, it's just a, a nice round number or is there a benefit to using a higher versus a lower number? Nice round number. We could set that to a hundred. Let's set it to a hundred and then it's an even smaller, nicer, rounder number. There, we, there go. we go. And because we've set the width over here, there's no material change, right? Because no we material change because we haven't changed the ratio of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to be playing around a little bit with Greensock today to animate SVG elements. So okay. we can start off by getting Greensock um, okay. included in our project, the actual library. And it looks like because I forked this from you, it was already set up. But what we did here is um, we just, I'll step through this again. We, in the, the gearbox by the JS in CodePen, we clicked that. And then here you would just search for GSAP and we selected that. And then uh, scroll trigger is here. And once we select those, they end up, and now we can use them and they're just in the scope of our, our JavaScript. Yeah, and I think that's that's a cool thing about using CodePen, um, because the like the core Greensock library is free to use for the majority of use cases. I think if you're super big business corp um, and you're charging users for your end product, then there's a small fee. But mm -hmm. for the majority of people, it's like free. Um, but they've got some bonus plugins that are behind a membership fee. Um, okay. They're just kind of fun ones, like physics ones, uh, physics-based ones, and um, some kind of motion path. No, the motion path one's free. It's like, I'm not sure which ones are paid, but you can play <laughs> with them all on CodePen for free. That's what I was going to be covering. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So now we have, we have GSAP available, and we have an SVG, and we can see Let's it. Let's move the rectangle. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. Hey. <laughs> so in order to move a rectangle, we have to do a tween. So okay. a green sock tween is GSAP. So you type GSAP and that is the green sock object. And then everything that you can do within green sock is within that. So uh, we're going to use a method called two. So dot two. 
Um, and then we're going to do open curly brackets, round brackets. Or round brackets, OK. Those are the ones. Um, and then we're going to choose a target. So, oh, we haven't given a class to our rectangle. So we should go add a class to our rectangle so we can target it. You could also target it with just rect if you wanted, but then that's probably not the best plan. Right. Yeah. So is this right? Yeah, that's okay. great. So Greensock uses um, document.query selector under the hood. So oh, you can nice. actually type whatever you want in there. I've put in some crazy CSS selectors to choose specific things before. Excellent. Um, so then we're going to do a comma. And then we're going to pass in an object of settings. OK. Awesome. So the very simplest thing that we can do is um, maybe let's just move it from the well to the right hand side. So let's say X percent. X percent like this? Mm hmm with a oh. capital P. And then we're going to do dotty semicolons. I don't know the names for all the things. This is bad. No, this is great. I, this is <laughs> actually one of my favorite. My pairing. I'm just like cur curly brackets, dotty. <laughs> no, like legitimately, this is one of my favorite things about Learn with Jason is that you get to hear how someone verbally describes code and no one does it the same. Like it's a it's such a fun adventure every single time because we all have like the secret words in our brains that we use when we're describing things. And I love that you just called it a dotty semicolon like that. <laughs> at, work, at work, we call braces like curly boys and round boys and square boys. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. OK, so, so yeah, so. X percent. <laughs> so um, we're going to, yeah, 100. That's what we were doing. Sorry, I got distracted. By no, this. no, we're, we're all good. Um, yeah. So oh, look at it go. Yeah, it moves. And um, it actually moves quite nicely, you might have noticed, because yeah. Greensock um, comes with defaults. So the defaults are 0 0.5 seconds um, and standard ease. So that's kind of what's happening with that little I'm just rectangle. refreshing the page to see this. Cool. Yeah. So, um, how, like, what if we wanted to. Well, actually, I'll just ask you, what should what what do you want to do next year? <laughs> well, we can we can use um, gsap.from as well. That's another method that we've got. OK, so gsap.2 moves something from its existing values to some new values and gsap.from um, moves it from some values to its existing values. So if we change oh, okay. the dot .2 to a dot .from, We'll see that it comes oh. in from the right hand side. And so practically speaking, like from makes a lot of sense if this is when the page loads, you want to move things into position, then that would be great because you put everything where you want it and then do a dot from to have it, you know, fly in from wherever or fade in or, or grow or something like that. Yeah, cool. um, it's it's a thing that I use a lot with SVG animation because you often want to structure your SVG so that it's um, like everything's where you want it and then use from to do the animations. Okay. Um, so everything ends up in the right place. Whoops. I got to go into, into streamer mode over here, getting notifications. Hush you. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. So, so <laughs> someone said that they'd be interested to see how you use easing in green yes. Um, so the best way to do that is to look at the easing, um, thing, the easing doodah on the Greensock site. So if you go to Google, so if you search I, Greensock easing. Easing doodah. Easing doodah. It still comes up. <laughs> <laughs> you do <search. laughs> Yeah, so this is the Greensock easing doodah. Um, and yeah, you can, you can click on all these different types of easers, and then you can use them in your project. So that one's actually a really cool one. It kind of shows you the rough ease. It shows you the um, the power of easing, basically. Yeah. Like if you wanted something to jerk around, 
like wobble around um, and you are trying to do that with CSS because you've only got cubic bezier to work with. So you've got easers that have two control points. That's all you right. ever have. Um, you'd have to write all that out with keyframes. Whereas with GreenSock, um, it uses SVG path data um, as, uh, as the easing curve. So we don't just have two handles like we do with cubic bezier. We've got like a whole bunch of different handles. So you can create all of these crazy easers. Yeah, these are fun. Yeah. And it's cool too to see like, so we've got the, the ability to, to control like the ease in and out. Um, or just, you know, it starts flat and then we control that or, or each of those pieces. That is really nice. Do me a favor and click on the custom. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wait, go, go to, yeah. Okay. So you can click and drag these things around, but here's a really cool thing. If you go maybe to power one, so you get the right number of points and then okay. go back to custom. Ah, didn't work. Anyway, go to the last little point, so the top one, top point, and drag that down to the bottom, bottom right corner. So that's that is the location, right? That's where where you are in a time frame. So so you can create an ease that basically plays all the way through your animation and then goes back to the beginning again, which blows my mind. So it's actually. Ah, that's really fun. So at the at the end of the timeline, the progress is back to zero. Yeah. Now this is really cool. Really, really cool. And that means that you could just do that with one tween in Greensock. You don't actually have to um keyframe everything. Yeah. That's no, that's wonderful because that's something that I can see being really tedious is like Oh, okay. Well, now I got to add another keyframe to make it do this little judder or or something like that. If you've got, if you're trying to get like life into it, um, but I mean, it's also just kind of nice to see like that already feels pretty good. So you could come in here and yeah. start with that and then mess with it a little bit, and that, that's that's really powerful stuff. Yeah, it's seriously powerful. Um, so yeah, I I really love kind of recommending to people that they play around with easers, like it's the most important thing in animation. And you can, if you can offload a bunch of your animation code just onto some easers, then you can cut down the size of your animation code hugely as well. Mm -hmm. And that's like the maths that we were talking about, right? That's what GreenSock does, does the maths. So you're, you've kind of got these easing curves, which are doing the maths for you and you can just kind of offload it to the easing. Ah, wow, that's really, really cool. Well, so let's choose a good one. Let's choose. Okay. Let's choose like a. I really like the Expo. Expo ease. Yeah. Okay. And you can see down at the bottom it says Expo ease out. If you were to click on the ease out, it would change yes. it to. Yeah, there's ease in and ease in out as well. Nice. Okay. And so then, if I want to use this, oh boy, what did I do? No, go if away. you want to use it, you just copy the ease, ease and out bit, or just type it. We can remember it. Uh, do that over in here. We can so, do so we'll just we go on to another line and ease. say ease. And then is and it, then is it just in, like? In little quotes, um, say expo. And then dot out. Ease in out. And then was the the Y I think on the that? Expo was a little. Oh no, that was a large E. Ease in out. Okay. And then is that just going to work for us? Let's see. Wait, save. Save first, and then then run it. <laughs> I think I did it wrong. Why, what am I doing wrong? I think you did it right. Is that? It's quite, it's quite fast. So we can change the duration. Can okay. change the duration to like two maybe. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah, you're right. It was just too fast. Yeah, that's the one. Um, 
cool. Oh, did I? I think I'm in. This is V2, oh, so yeah. I need it to be V3. Oh, yeah, you need to be V3. Oh, thank you, chat. Um, uh, so now uh, I need. Now where's I was my easing? I got in that. Notice that. Okay, it's so a, then. It's still the same, though. Just lowercase expo dot out. Expo. Yeah, I was wondering that. I was like, it should be a little, little e, but that wasn't. So you can do it like this instead. Yeah, and dot out is the default as well, so we can just say expo. And if we do ease in out, then we get that same, like it starts slow and then speeds up and then slows out again. That's really nice. Cool. Okay, I'm ready. Um, well, that yeah, so that did exactly what we wanted. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, um, so this is just like a rectangle, right? And that's like, that's a little bit boring. Well, it's fun. It's fun, but it could be more fun. Mm -hmm. So um, let's use this as a mask on an image. Okay. So if we go into our SVG, the first thing I guess is adding an image okay. into our SVG. So um, in SVG, we can use image tags like, like we do in HTML, but they are image tags, not image. So it's I-M-A-G-E. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, and then uh, we can do X um, equals zero and Y equals zero and height 100%, width 100% again. Okay, with 100%. Um, and then do we, I need to find an image, I assume? Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Unsplash. We have a request for piglets, which, chat, I understand your motivation, piglets. but I'm feeling a little bit betrayed that it's not, oh, okay, all right, this is a good piglet, though. Um, oh, that's a good piglet. All right, <clears throat> all right, you win. I was going to be mad at you for not doing corgis, but I can make <laughs> this, um, this is some cool stuff we can do. We can use, this is ImageX under the hood, I think. And so we can tell it to crop and... Piggies! <laughs> oh, they're so cute. I think we even do like, is it like that? No, it's crop entropy, I think. And then it should actually show us our piggy in the center. Neat. Okay, so now we have this, this little centered piggy and is it source still? href. href. Yeah. Okay. There's our piggy. Ooh, so there's our piggy. Um, and now we've got a square SVG. So it mm -hmm. is a, it looks like it is the perfectly um, proportioned piggy. But if we were to change the view box um, in our SVG and we were to make it twice as high as it is wide. We said yeah. height 100%. We said height 100%. Oh, we have. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So it hasn't stretched. And I think that's because the preserve aspect ratio for images must be different than SVG. That did a different thing from what I was expecting. Um, but anyway, so the, the scaling of images um, and SVG in general um, it's kind of down to uh, preserve aspect ratio. Nice. So we can use preserve aspect ratio to kind of change it. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm just dropping a link to the URL parameters that uh, you can use in Unsplash. Um, and so if I say preserve aspect, do I say it in here or do I add it as a CSS prop? In the image, yeah. So it's an attribute. You can have preserve aspect ratio. A lot of people see it on is, um, an SVG element, um, SVG itself, but you can actually use it on things inside um, an SVG okay. as well. And then is this so, um, is this camel cased? Yeah, preserve aspect ratio. A and R are both big letters. Okay. Awesome. So preserve aspect ratio is basically like um, background. Um, cover and contain like we have in CSS, but it's SVG world version of that. So um, rather than cover and contain and background position, we have, um, well, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. So if we go preserve aspect ratio equals, equals. and then quotes, and we're going to say 
X mid, so little letter X, capital letter M I D. Yeah, I think. Okay. And then I think it's capital Y capital M. Like spaces or no, no space. So capital Y capital M. Okay. Capital Y. Capital Y capital M. Yeah. Well, not what you'd expect. So Y mid and then slice after that. Okay. Oh, I think that says X mid Y mid. So X mid Y min. Y min. Yeah. And then a space between slice and Y min. And is slice lowercase then? Slice is lowercase, yeah. Okay. Did we get it? Hey, there we go. Hey, okay, cool. So that was kind of complicated to write out, but um, X mid and Y min. Um, oh yeah, we could do X mid Y. Someone in the chat's got got me confused because they were saying X mid Y min, but you can also do X mid Y mid. So the X mid and the Y um, mid min bit is where that's positioned um, gotcha. on the X axis and on the Y axis. So oh, that's okay. saying X in the middle and Y in the middle right now. And then and, slice and so is min saying, would be at the top of the SVG and why max presumably would be the bottom of the SVG? Yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. I get that. So then we have left, center, right, top, middle, bottom as as like our options for positioning. Mm -hmm. So if we change that to slice to meet, rather than sizing up and slicing off the excess, it will size up until it meets the SVG uh. container. Gotcha. So if you change Y mid to Y min now, you'll oh, yeah. be able me, to see it going see up that. like a little elevator. Okay. Yeah, and then Y max, it would go down. Perfect. Excellent. Cool. So that's how you do sizing images in SVG. And so if we want to cover, which is what we probably want to do in this case, then we use the X mid Y mid slice that will center the image and fill the available space. Yep. Cool. And then we can make our view box go back to a square now because we're done demoing that. <laughs> Excellent. Nice and now we've got a happy little piglet. Yeah. Awesome. So right now we've got our image is on top of the rectangle that we drew. And that's mm -hmm. because SVG has an explicit drawing order. So anything that we draw after something else um, will be on the top. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to put that rectangle into a mask now. So we're going to create a mask element in okay. our SVG. We'll make it the first thing that's in our SVG. And it, it's going to be like this, like a group kind of thing? Mask, mask. OK, and then I'm going to put the rectangle we're just inside put the of it. the rectangle inside it. OK. OK. And, and for all intents and purposes right now, this is, it, it, did this just kind of pull it out of the, we can't see it at all now? Yeah, so we can't see it at all. Um, it's in a mask, so it's not directly rendered. OK, perfect. Awesome. So we're going to give the mask an ID. So ID. The, the mask itself gets an ID? Yeah, the mask element itself. Okay. ID equals my mask or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there we go. So that's so that we can assign the mask to something. OK, I, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so then I assume here, if we want to mask the image, now yeah. we're going to use that ID. Yeah, Okay. that's what we're going to do. So um, we are going to use that ID by saying mask equals my mask. Awesome. And then, oh, no, it needs URL. Of course it does. URL, mask equals URL, and, is it and like then brackets, the... and then a hash. Yeah. Look ID. at it go. Awesome. So what you might notice is that the image has just kind of turned this fadey color. Yeah. Um, and that's because masks use alpha values to mask things. Ooh, OK. 
So clip paths use geometry. So if this was a clip path, it would just use the geometry of that rectangle. Um, but masks, they will show anything under a white pixel and they will hide anything under a black pixel. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's really cool because you can use um, like gradients and stuff. Right. Um, so I, I kind of like to think of masking as it's kind of like um, like collage, whereas clipping is like cutting out. So clip parts are like scissors if you want to chop something out with some geometry. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to kind of fade something, then you want to use masks. Got it. Okay. So yeah, this is... That's very cool. And then if we, yeah, so if we want something in the middle, we we just do like a gray and then it's a, so it, and that makes it semi-transparent, right? Yeah. Yeah, basically. we can see the the little bit of, of blur back here coming in. Ah, oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, it's very cool. I I really like, um, oh, we'll get, we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> um, so <laughs> yeah, we can take the border off the SVG. Okay, let's do it. As well now, because we've kind of got stuff in it, so we can see. Bye, Plum. Bye, Plum. Oh, how long do we have as well? I never. We have about forty minutes remaining. Sweet, loads of time. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, that that's an image mask basically. Yeah. Um, and that's like it's a really cool technique to be able to do. Um, and you can animate you know image masks on things when the page loads and well, stuff and and i also like what i love about this is that what we just did seems challenging like it seems like a lot mm. but really what we've done is we drew a box we set that box as a mask we loaded an image and then we told it to to use that mask and even without this so like we could we could drop out the gsap stuff and then we could just make this rectangle 50% wide or something. Yeah. And now we we can draw like, you know, a rectangle is is a rectangle, but you can draw custom shapes and stuff in here. And now we've got control. We can make custom image shape borders and stuff. And we don't need a library or anything. We, we can hand code yeah. this. That's really exciting. And the other cool thing as well is that you can use SVG masks um, else, like elsewhere on other HTML elements. So uh, for, the, really? for the ease of use in this demo, I've got an image inside an SVG, but we could also have an image tag, um, and then we could apply the SVG mask to it in CSS. Wow, OK. Oh, someone's asked if I do guides or courses. I'm doing a course with Smashing oh, in nice. February. Come to my course. <laughs> How do I find that? Plug. <laughs> I think it's, um, yeah. SVG Animation Masterclass. There it is. Yeah, I think that's the one. Go get it. Yeah. And these these smashing workshops are really, really cool, too. I love the format. Um, it, this is one of the ones that, yeah, it goes across multiple days. They're short sessions, so you get time to learn something and then let it sink in before you move on to the next thing instead of mm -hmm. traditional workshops where you get, like, information drilled into your brain for a full day and then you maybe retain a little bit of it. Uh, right. I, I really, really like these formats. So this is going to be a great one. Go go get a ticket. I also have quite bad anxiety and I and imposter syndrome and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, wait, so this... when I was writing the workshop, I deliberately wrote it so that people won't feel like left out or stupid. Like everything is like there for you that you need to know. I love so. it. I think I I think I linked to the wrong one. This is the right one. Yeah. February. Go get the February course. That's the one. Um, <laughs> the other one is over. <laughs> yeah, the other one. We've already done that. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. So now that we have a, a masked image, um, what what would you like to show next? Okay. So let's do oh, what should we do next? Okay, let's do a cool green sock thing. So Yes. It's going to involve you drawing more rectangles in your SVG. Well, but fortunately, thanks to you, I am now a rectangle expert, so I am a so ready. Of rectangles. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to draw ten rectangles that are all okay. the height of the SVG, but only ten percent of the width. Okay, and am I doing That's that in a mask? In the in the mask. Yes, in the mask. 
Okay, so we'll we'll get one of these set up. Um, do they need do they need a class, right? Um, yeah, so you can give them all the same class. We can give them a class of rectangles. Uh, <laughs> the most descriptive. Yes, this is going to be great. Okay, so then this one is going to be x zero and yeah. y zero and width. Uh, if I can write ten percent and height one hundred percent. Yeah. And then if I copy paste this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, nine. You need 10. to give it. You need to give it a fill first. No. Okay. All right. Let's undo all of that. <laughs> Go back. <laughs> okay. Uh, so then I need a fill of white, white. I assume. Yes. All right. So now I'm going to copy paste. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then with these, because it's a hundred percent, I'm going to bounce the the x over by 10 at a time, right? Yeah, 10 at a time. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. 90. And we can get rid of our original rectangle that we're animating right. at Screw the moment. One up. Yeah, rectangle master at work. <laughs> Taught you well, I, Jedi. Did I? Did I? Oh, oh man, I still, I still managed to screw it up. But we're okay. <laughs> we're back. All right. Um, so here's we've got all of our rectangles. I've taken off the main one, and so now, if we go to our green sock and we say rectangles, got it. Um, and let's change x percent to y. Okay. So what we'll see here <clears throat> is that it will target all of them together because it uses um, document.query selector under the hood. So it's just getting all of our rectangles. So that's basically no different to what we had before. Mm -hmm. But what you can do with green suck is you can do staggers and staggers are super cool. And it's only like a tiny bit of code as well. So we can say um, underneath duration. Okay. Someone's asked if I stream. I streamed once and someone was really horrible to me and I never did it again. So. No. <laughs> but I've done two Twitch streams with other people now um, and they've been really nice. So maybe, maybe sometime in the future. Um, so yeah, stagger. Stagger. And, and then, then say 0 0.1. Let's do that. Oh. Whoa. Jeez, that is that was so much. Again, just kind of blown away by how approachable this all is. Um, it's you know I, again like when we started, I was saying that one of the things that that overwhelms me about GSAP is that there's Holy so buckets, much you can did do. That just work. <laughs> Holy buckets, indeed. Um, <laughs> the unit is in seconds, right? So we we basically said start each. Like if we're gonna do ten animations, start each one point one seconds after the one before it. Is that right? That's the one. That's so cool. um, and you can pass in a uh, an object to stagger as well. So right now we, we've just kind of got the most simple stagger. Um, but if you were to pass in an object instead of 0 0.1. Object, so some curly boys. Curly boys. OK. <laughs> then what? And then um, we can say, uh, oh, let me just double check. Double check in the docs. OK, so it's each. Each and zero point one. Okay. So that will do what we did before. That's the default. You can also do a mount. So if we did a mount, a mount and zero point one instead of each, yeah. Maybe do zero point four or something, because zero point one will happen really quickly. Yeah, there we go. So amount is like that's the whole time, and we want to stagger all of those. Oh, elements, those so out. so if we wanted to take like a full second to start the the transition, we could do it like this, and then the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right starting is one second. Is that correct? That's it. Yeah. Okay. So the whole animation duration will be one second. Excellent. Okay. That's awesome. Really cool. Okay. So then we, we can, can go also back say here. from. In, in uh, stagger? Yeah, so on another line. Oh, oops, okay. Let me let me roll back to one from. 
from, and we can say in quotes, center. Ooh. <laughs> Which is cool. Oh, that's fun. Okay. I love it. Um, and we can do from end, I think is that is one of them. So that will go from the end. Someone says from random. I didn't know you can do that. Let's try that. What? Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. I love it so much. What what a bunch of fun. Hey, I thought it was meant to be me teaching you. I'm <laughs> learning things. Learning with Jason. Oh, I'm into it. I'm so into it. <laughs> cool. So yeah, that's that's kind of some fun staggering with Green Suck. Mm-hmm. Um boop, boop, what should we do next? Um, oh, scroll trigger. Let's do scrolling. Yeah, let's do it. That was the whole point of this, wasn't it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Getting distracted by the piglets. <laughs> it's uh, it's an easy thing to do. Yep. Um, so yeah, if you go into the CSS and you make it like 500 high. Right. That was on the body. People, we like, went 500. 200 or whatever, whatever amount of hundreds you want to. Okay. So here now. We do it like this, then we're able to scroll uh, five times the the height of the viewport. Awesome. So let's let's put the piggies further down. Okay. And do you want me to do that with like a position yep. fixed or? You can do like a margin top. That will work. Um. Maybe. Like maybe that. I'll do streaming of people. Will be nice to me. <laughs> we. Look, the chat here, we will we will go to war for you. We'll take people out. Okay. I'll think about it. Maybe next <laughs> year. <laughs> Someone's like bonk the idiots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean we what I've noticed is like on, on this stream, you know, we've uh we've got a couple mods that do a great job. So, you know, like Tony is in here and and a couple other folks who hang out and will if, if anybody comes in and does nonsense they just immediately get kicked and and it starts to it sets up a good like community standard right um mm -hmm. but it yeah it, it was a little a little rough at the beginning but um now that we've now that we've got good mods in place and, and people paying attention it uh it, it stays pretty That's positive awesome. in here yeah it feels really nice and full of nice people in this stream be nice or get out. Absolutely, Brandon. That's the motto here. <laughs> okay, so I've I've bumped this. It's uh, roughly halfway down the page now. Awesome. So we want to be triggering this um, on scroll. So we need to use scroll trigger for that. Okay, and we we so, brought that in already. So that's in our it's in our our document. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. I think it might be good to go to the green sock docs actually. Okay. Just to have a little look so that people know where to go to and so that I can steal snippets. <laughs> oh wait, I need the docs. Docs for scroll trigger. Here we go. I always go to their landing page and it has auto playing music and I always just get like dun, 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 in my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> it's auto playing video and it's very dramatic and I've done it about 20 times now and I never learn. Okay. So yeah, scroll trigger is basically a replacement for scroll magic because um, lots of people were okay. using scroll magic and kind of trying to get scroll magic and green stock to play nicely together. And it was a little bit difficult to do that. Mm. Um, so green sock were like, well, everyone wants to do scroll animation. So why don't we make a good scroll plugin? Um, and I'm a big fan because they are, um, they're very hot on performance at Greensock and it mm. uses one scroll event listener behind the scenes. So it just kind of adds things to that one listener. Um, nice. It does it in a really good performant way. So I think scroll animations can be a bit hefty sometimes. That, um, that's something I've noticed is like you'll go to a site and it looks beautiful, but if you scroll beyond like the slowest possible speed, the whole page judders and jumps and then your your laptop starts to lift off the table when the fans fire up and uh and so hearing that actually makes me really happy because i've always loved the idea of doing these really interactive scrolls but a lot of what keeps me away from it is that i just didn't think they could be performant yeah um i mean they say here there's no scroll jacking 
Um, so they, they do do things in a really good way. That doesn't mean that you don't have to be responsible. Like sure. with animation, with great power comes great responsibility. So if you animate everything, right. it's going to be laggy. Like there's only so much <laughs> that GreenSock can do. But if you're responsible and you're using scroll trigger, mm -hmm. um, you kind of you're going to be quite a, a lot of the way towards a good performant animation. Nice. And so, so if, yeah. if I'm understanding this correctly, does this mean that all we have to do to make this work is add this one line and, oh my goodness, okay. So let's That's make that the happen. most simple. And so it's a lot like um, the stagger that I showed earlier. There's like the simple version and then there's the, the one where you can pass in an object. Okay, so I'm just going to set up scroll trigger and we're going to say, what did we call this we thing? give our SVG an ID so we we'll can- Give it an ID. Yeah. Or we can use SVG, I guess. Let's do it like this. Well, Piggies. Okay, so we've saved. And now, assuming I didn't typo anything, when we scroll down the page, when we see the piggies come in, that's when we'll see this animation. So here we go. Look at that. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. And and it's currently set up to only go once. So once we've once we've showed it, it doesn't do it again. But if I refresh, there we go. There's our piggies. Dang, that's cool. That's super cool. And like, um, what a what a truly like effortless way to make that happen too. Like that's uh, not what I would have expected, right? Like I, I think I'm I'm getting a lot of my my fears of GSAP kind of reset here because I thought this stuff was hard. And and what I like is that it's not hard. You just have to know what you're looking for, not necessarily be a genius. Do you can do really complicated things with it. So I've got a lot of code pens where I have really pushed its limits limits, and I've written loads and loads of green sock code. And if you were a beginner and you looked at that, you'd probably be like, oh, what is this black magic? <laughs> um, but you can do really complicated things with it because it is so friendly to use. Yeah. Um, the docs are so nice. And I always say the green sock forums are basically like Stack Overflow, but with nice people. Um, That's <laughs> I like that. That's a strong yeah. endorsement. Yeah. Um, so we were going to do a little liquid mask. Okay. But I'm going to have to give you a path to do that because I've written out some path data. Okay. Written out some path data. I say like I wrote out the path data. <laughs> Nonsense. I used a graphics editor. Um, should I send it to you on? Uh, if you just want to throw it into like our Twitter DMs, that's probably the easiest. More boops while I'm finding the thing. Yeah, flood it, flood it chat. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and chat delivers. So many of them. <laughs> Just a, another shout out while we're waiting. Um, make sure you go and get a ticket for this course because it's going to be really good. Um, I know I'm gone. I'm I'm drowned. I've been booped <laughs> to death. <laughs> well, when we when we finish drowning in boops, we can we can make a little liquidy thing. Okay, I have the path. Have you got and it? I'm coming back and I'm ready. All right. So, so the first thing you should do is put that inside a D attribute in the path element. But we'll do that when people. Oh, can so see we the would need to add again. code. All right, chat, to chill it out. <laughs> we got stuff to do here. <laughs> um, I, I no, definitely do I need like a clear me. boops. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Oh, I can see the piggies again. Yay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So not in the mask, because if we put not it in the, in mask, the mask, no one can see it. So let's okay. make it the last, the last element in okay. our SVG. Okay. And so you said it was in a path. Yeah. So in a path. And then and a D at or a D element inside of that? D attribute. Yeah. So a D, oh, a D attribute. attribute. Got it. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So then is path self-closing? 
Um, yes, oh, it is. Thank you for the help, Code Pen. D. So the D attribute is where all of the cool numerical gubbins goes that okay. makes up a path. And so, so when we look at this, it. I mean, I, I feel like this is something that we probably would generate in like Figma or Sketch or or something like that, right? Yeah, um, you can draw SVG paths out. I have tried it before with varying levels of success. Um, <laughs> basically, what you need to know is that the numbers are um, commands. No, not numbers. The letters are commands and the numbers are coordinates. So the M at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, that command basically means move to this point. Don't draw anything, just kind of pick your pen up and put it down at that point. Um, and the C is like a Bezier curve. Um, yeah, there's lots of different path commands. So if you're mm -hmm. really interested in drawing out an SVG, you can kind of look up path commands on MDN and then I... just kind of give them a little draw. I'm pretty sure that Shirley and I did this. Where, when did we draw the bucket? I think we drew the oh, bucket. Yeah. Someone said Shirley Wu explained these on a previous. I, I think, no, it's not that one. It's definitely not this one. This was when we tried to learn Nuxt and couldn't. <laughs> uh, I think it was this one um, when we drew. It's, it's one of the ones in this series. Um, and so that that one would be a good one. And then I also did, uh, while I'm in here, Sarah and I did a a, a course where we ah, did. Ah! Behold! My bucket! That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That was uh, from the episode with Shirley and I when we drew oh, the bucket. We, cool. we hand-coded our SVG bucket, and then I got really excited. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Behold my bucket. Um, and then this is an episode that uh, mm -hmm. that Sarah and I did where we dug into some more like animation techniques. So kind of maybe something to dig into after this if you want to take this, you know, just get all the green sock stuff going. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm in here. I've got a path. I can't see it presumably. Well, actually, probably for a few reasons. One is because we... all the way down at the bottom. Yeah, let's turn that off for a second. So I'm going to just comment that out. Come back. Okay. And so it's a it's a black oh, box now. It's because the view box is different. So we're going to change the size of the view box to 800. Oh, okay. 800 and 1,000. And 1,000. Okay. Oh, it's all black. Why is it all black? Do I need to add a fill is or anything to my path? Quotes quotes around the path. So I just did little horns. Sorry, that's weird. Uh, sorry. Quotes. So um, before the M, there needs to be a quote. This, is that not right? Yeah. Like, yeah, the path needs to be in quotes, like a string. Isn't isn't it? Did I, am I screwing this up? Oh yeah, no, it is. I can see. Okay, so that should be working. Why is that not working? Do you want to give it a fill? Let's give it a fill. Okay. Oh, no, wait. How does it start? M3. M53. Oh. What did we set the view box as? Uh, 0, 0, 1000. Are we inside the mask? No. Let me just comment mm -hmm. all of that out just in case. Hmm. Nope. Devil quotes. No, not. not. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, boy, mm -hmm. Wait, I'm going to send you a whole path on Twitter. Okay. Maybe it's something funny. Let's try this again. Try that. That looks Here like we go. Exactly the same thing. So I've got my path. And as far as I can, whoops. 
This should be zero, zero, 0800 and 1000. Is it... Hmm, I wonder if I need to like... So that path. should be working. Interesting. Here's that. Got our 800. Did I break anything? Maybe I can turn all of this off just in case it's doing something. Yeah, maybe. And then... Oh, it might... I'm going to troubleshoot this here as well. Let's see. What do you think, chat? Do you see anything? Self-close is an issue. That would be curious, but let's try it. Maybe it is doing what I thought it should do, but I've put it in a different position. Um, let's go into, go into green. Change the color. In fact, let's change the color to plum, and then we can see whether we can actually see it. Um, Scroll down. Where's it gone? It's disappeared entirely. Disappeared. What? What? Why did it eat my... That was bizarre. Did you see that? It, it ate, ate my path. path. Okay, so we can see it. We can see it. I thought we couldn't see it at all. That's fine. Um, let's go down to our green sock code. Okay. And let's make a tween for that wobble path. So we're going to say gsap dot from wobble. Then some curly boys. Curly boys. And then we're going to move it from the right hand side. Let's try that. Uh, is that so X? X percent? X percent. That's right. And then it mm -hmm. was 100. Oh, I saw it. Did you see that? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, come on. I don't know why it's not doing my auto save for me now, but it was there for for a brief second. Let's. Ah, it was there. It was there. Okay. Duration oh, of that's like good. three seconds. I just put it in a different place on the on the um in the view box than I thought I did. Hey. Okay. Cool. So okay. I made this little wobbly shape. Um, and what I've done with this wobbly shape is this wobbly shape is all the way over in the view box and we actually want it to come in from the bottom right hand corner. So um, if you do Y percent 100 as well, then it'll come in from the bottom. Oh yeah, look at it go. It's like a little liquid wobble. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> let's change the duration to two. Got it. Um, and then we're going to just steal the scroll trigger from our previous, our previous one. So we're going to leave the, um, yeah, we're going to leave the rectangles now. No more rectangles. Okay, so we did it. Got that. And then because it's in view, it's immediately visible. So let me move this back down. Cool. And then we're going to put that shape into the mask. So we're going to use okay. that as a mask now instead of the rectangles. Yeah, someone said it's made them not scared of GSAP. That's awesome. Good. It also made me not scared of GSAP, uh, which, is, which is wonderful news. Um, so now I have... You can get rid of all of the rectangles if that makes it easier. Well, I was going to keep them in just so that people could... Um, I will play around with them. Continue, yeah, continue to play around. And then I'm going to get that out of here. And then I'm going to copy this path. And we'll move this up into our mask. Yeah. Okay, so now it's in there and it's got an ID of wobble. So I'm assuming <laughs> here I change this to wobble. Um, oh, no, because it's inside the mask. So we're referencing the mask element itself, and then that's inside the mask. Oh, 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 I understand. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, so then... you can have anything you want inside a mask. Um, 
I've actually. Wow. I've, it worked. And it's fady again because we've used we've used plum. plum. So it's doing that masking thing. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Yeah. So let me change so that. Away I've, from I've actually got a one. demo um, where I'm moving around lots of circles inside an SVG mask, but then those circles also have a filter applied to them. So they're all gooey and kind of clumping together, um, which is incredibly non-performant and you wouldn't <laughs> want to put it on the actual internet. But <laughs> fun. Okay. And then we can also show if we uncomment this, So we can, and we could even do something like, um, yeah, let's make the little piggy a bit smaller. What unexpected character? What? Leave me alone. What have I done? Doesn't look like you've done anything. Weird that it did that. Stop yelling at me. Um, and then. Wow. Sweet. Okay. Make the piggy smaller. Make him like 40% of the, what is he now? He's quite big. Yeah, he's a little smaller. And then, go. yeah, we so we can use scroll trigger now to kind of change um how that behavior works so at the moment we're just saying um piggies like scroll um use the scroll animation when piggies comes into view but we can pass in an object of different things i got a i got a cool idea from the chat Ooh. to try a mixed blend mode that's a cool idea <gasps> cool. i like it that's fun good call chat okay so so now I'll actually do what it's you like want. It's like zombie um, piggies behind <laughs> behind the text. Um, so I, I've I've added a curly boy to the to scroll trigger, and we've got some zombie piggies. Um, cool. So yeah, scrolly sc scroll trigger stuff. Um, so we're gonna say trigger, and we're gonna give it whatever trigger element it is. So yeah, did we call our SVG piggies? I, um, yeah. Yes. Yes, cool. Um, what we can do is we can pass in all sorts of cool things. So we can say that we want to pin the element while the animation's playing. So if we pass in pin true, it will change okay. it to position fixed while the animation is playing and pin it to wherever it is on the screen. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, yeah. Have we got a duration? We don't, yeah, well, we have okay. a duration of two, so it, it pins for two seconds. Is that right? Yeah, it should do. Yeah, okay. it is doing that. Awesome. So um, what we can also do is we can say scrub, and then scrub will tie the animation to the scroll. Okay. Um, and you can either say scrub true, or you can pass in a second value, and that's how long it will take to catch up with the scroll bar. So I usually do scrub one, and then it just takes one second to catch up to the scroll bar. And it feels a little bit more um, like natural. It feels a little bit less gamified. If it's tied like directly to the scroll, it feels a little bit too much like you can control it. Oh, one yeah. More natural. Yeah, so when I'm, if I like just tap it, it moves a little bit. Yeah. And it, it doesn't feel, yeah, I see what you said. I, yeah, that totally makes sense because it feels a little, like feels it all just feels fluid. a little cleaner. Yeah. And you can kind of do, I, like I had some background elements that were moving um, on a scrolly site that I just did. And I had scrub um, set to four on that. So when they stopped scrolling, there were just these kind of subtle animations happening in the background, Very which is cool. a nightmare for people who don't like motion on websites. So if you're going to do that, it's always good to do prefers reduced motion. Yes. And prefers reduced, if you haven't seen this, uh, reduced motion, this is a, a setting that you can like check for. 
and that comes from user preferences. So that way, if you, you can just say like, if someone prefers reduced motion, don't do this thing. Um, so that's a CSS thing that we can check for. And then we can also check this in JavaScript, right? Yeah, you can. We can do that right now, actually. If we yeah, let's to. do it. Let's do it. Uh, it's going to break it on my my computer, actually. <laughs> well, we can do like a little faux one. Um, so I always have an animation is OK variable in my JavaScript. So we can do const animation is OK. And then you say window.matchmedia. Window match media. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, curly brackets. And then we put the prefers reduced motion preference in there. So it is, um, or oh, it's a, so like a, okay, so more curly boys. Is it like, the, is it this one? Yes. Prefers reduced motion. Yeah. So in the curly brackets, not, not with media. Okay. So just, just this one here. Yeah. Okay. So then I go back over here like this. Yep. Um, but then we're going to say, so prefers reduced motion. Um, after prefers reduced motion, semicolon. Oh, yeah, that one. Um, no preference. No dash preference. Yeah. Cool. And then the last bit is you have to say dot matches afterwards. So that's checking that that matches. Right. So that's basically we're saying look for this setting and mm -hmm. this is the if it's on. Yeah. Check that it matches. OK. And so, so I have I have this turned off, actually. So if we say if animation is OK. Yep. If animation is OK. Um, and then we'll wrap this here. And so what we'll see now is that this actually isn't going to do the thing because I have it disabled. Right. So we don't see the animation at all. Um, mm -hmm. and so because I have that and we want to see it, I'm going to turn this off and we'll see it come back. Yeah. And that there just, that returns true or false. So you could do animation, not okay. And just return out if you wanted. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's, that is, uh, it's an important thing to know. Okay. Excellent. I mean, this is this is really really cool stuff, um, and we've got about four minutes left, so that's probably a good place to to call it done. But holy crap, were we able to get a lot done in a we short amount so of time? Much. Yeah, Cassie, this was absolutely incredible. Thank you so much for spending some time and teaching us today. Uh, where should people go if they want to go further with this? I'm going to start by linking to your course one more time. Um, go get in on this workshop, get a ticket. Uh, yeah. Where else? Um, so personally, I think that you can learn a lot. If you're interested in SVG animation, the thing that will help you the most is understanding SVG itself. So kind of look at SVG masks and clip paths and filters and all of that stuff. And I think the best place to look for that is on MDN. Like, just look up the elements and pop them into CodePen and have a play around. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in a particular thing, like, always feel free to get hold of me and um, pop me an email or a message, and I'll point you in the right direction. Okay. Um, and then the GreenSock docs, if you want to be digging into animation, um, the GreenSock docs are really friendly. So. Um, and they've also got loads of code pens that you can fork. So you can kind of mm. learn by playing around, which is really good. That's always a really nice way to do it. And also, if you find GreenSock intimidating and you're, you know, just you've started learning CSS, say, and you're not so comfortable with JavaScript, um, you can animate SVG with CSS. So I don't usually animate um, SVG with CSS because it's quite difficult to chain animations together. Mm -hmm. um, and also there's a few like little cross browser quirks with SVG transforms. Um, but if you're playing around and learning things on CodePen, CSS is a really great place to start. 
so yeah don't don't let um you know fear of javascript or whatever hold you back i think that's yeah. where i started i started making css animations with svg and then i kind of moved to green sock once i got more confident absolutely and then i'm going to throw everyone back to your code pen as well because that is just a treasure trove of inspiring and exciting stuff make sure you go check all of these out um well cool so cassie i think i think that's the end of the episode so let's do one more shout out to our sponsors we've had live captioning through white coat captioning that's always available at lwj.dev live thank you to amanda who's been helping us out today um, that is made possible by netlify fauna sanity and auth zero who all generously pitch in to make this show more accessible to more people um, make sure you go check out our schedule as well. We've got some really, really fun stuff coming up. Uh, later this week, we've got Tanmay Gopal coming on to teach us Hasura. Uh, we're going to put some databases on our Jamstack sites. That is going to be super fun. I'm a big Hasura fan. It's going to be a lot of fun to, to work with. Uh, and then next week, we've got John Lindquist coming on to teach us how to write shell scripts in JavaScript. So if you want to customize the way your computer works, turns out you can do that in JavaScript. John's going to show us how. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you go check the whole schedule because we've got so, so much going on. Um, Cassie, do you have a, a Twitch handle that you want people to follow? I don't have a Twitch handle, but oh, I no. think I'm going to have to start streaming now after this because everyone was so lovely. <laughs> All right. We'll keep an eye on Cassie's Twitter then because that's going to be where the, the Twitch handle will get dropped. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that is it for us. So chat, stay tuned. We're going to raid. Cassie, thank you so, so much for hanging out and teaching us today. It was an absolute blast. We will see you next time, y'all. Cool. Bye, everyone. Thank you for being so nice. <laughs> <laughs>